So last time we talked, um, it, I did the correction. I did one on taking breaks for slackers. And that's the teen one. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a teen one. So I did that one. And then what came up after that is um, I think my child came out and thinks if we take a break, then we'll fall behind. So that, that makes sense. That that would fit very well with what your teen is doing. So it makes sense that your, your child would be having that go on and then your team would pick it up. It also fits with kind of like how your, I think it was your mom, right? But it was like mm -hmm. how your parents handled it. But I think it's, that makes sense. Like you're gonna yeah. fall behind, and you to keep up, that kind of stuff. Right, yeah, exactly. So I'm thinking I do a correction on that. I'm just not sure what the, well, that, that seems first and foremost, it seems like um, imperfect, is that right? Yeah, and so, but the term's defective, so just, Try to stay in the lingo because you'll throw yourself off. So, because yeah. the issue is perfect, perfects the teen, defectives the child. And yes, that's defective child. So, okay. basically, so you're right on. So, what you wrote down is if we take breaks, we'll fall behind. And so, is that literally the language that you hear? Yeah. Yeah, because I took two days off this week and now I feel really behind. But even during the day, if I take a lunch break, I'm like, oh, I'm so behind. I was supposed to be this far ahead and now I'm not. I'm at, like this far behind. So the, the thing is, is the falling behind is the defective part. In other words, if I fall behind, there's something wrong with me. So there's something wrong with me in falling behind or if I fall behind. Because when you look at this, it could be like an exposed. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, if we take breaks, then I'm going to fall behind and I'm worried about that. Mm -hmm. how it's really operating and you can tell if like as we break it down but like how it's really operating is in the defective area so, yeah so you want to focus on the fact that it's defective and the main thing is that i'm going to fall behind and that means that i'm broken and if i do then i'm broken so it's kind of like if that happens that's bad and also you know it's kind of proving the defective over and over again in that way so if I were you, I would just correct if we take breaks, we'll fall behind. But you want to focus in on the falling behind doesn't mean that you're broken. Mm -hmm. Like what's inherently wrong with falling behind and falling behind on what? Do you know what I mean? Can you answer yeah. that at all? Kind of just right now, like what comes up for you when I say falling behind on what? What are you falling behind in or on? Um... <laughs> I think I'm equating it to success. Like if I'm falling behind on my work day, it means I'm not successful or I'm not achieving what I want to. Yeah. And so there's something. Oh, underachieving. That's what it is. That's what it feels like. Achieving. Yeah. So there's something wrong with me if I am not achieving or if I'm not overachieving, it feels like. Yeah. That sounds more like it. Yeah. So it's if I am not overachieving, then I'm falling behind. So the reason I'm going through that with you is that you want to understand that that informs the correction you do with your child on defective. Yeah, that gives more clarity into what falling behind means. And I, didn't, I don't think I equated it or like I drew the line between the overachieving part because I was focusing more on underachieving, but I'm realizing that it's because there's this need to overachieve. Yep, there's an overachievement focus. And so if you're going to overachieve, let's say you have a kid and you're like, want to make them overachieve. You're going to be really focused on them always being productive and not falling behind. Yeah. Because it's like not really true. You're not actually falling behind. You're just not overachieving. So you want to equate the falling behind with overachieving in the correction. Mm -hmm. And your historical data is mom's focus on overachieving. And you don't have to do that anymore, Allison. You already achieve. You just need to keep achieving. It, the, the word's starting to sound fake, right? Like achieve, achieve. You know, like when you say something over and over again? It's like, yeah. super <laughs> like, wow, that word quickly loses meaning, <laughs> which is probably good because it has too much meaning. Like literally, sorry, those, those are cheesy therapy jokes. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, it's like overachievement is, is the problem. And you're not falling behind. There's nothing to fall behind on. That's just your mom's trip. And that's kind of what the historical data would focus on. So you want to break that down a little bit, even though it's your child. Like, hey, you know, you learned this from mom. If you fell behind, that meant that you were not overachieving. Mm -hmm. 
but you don't have to overachieve. You can still achieve stuff. And then you're gonna like turn her to you and be like, so the next time you think if we take breaks, we fall behind, come to me and I'll help you out. And then you don't have to do it for us anymore. Okay. But, but you can really see, right? Like that little girl in there, that's like always having to achieve, achieve, achieve and be an overachiever. Yeah, yeah for sure. It's a lot of pressure. And the fact of the matter is, is you're in touch with her quite a lot. I think maybe you haven't been aware of it as fully, but she talks to you a lot about overachieving and achieving. Mm -hmm. She does. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's very strong. Strong in you, as Yoda says. So I would definitely do that correction for sure. So is that helpful to you, Allison? Yeah. Yeah, that is. That gives me a lot of clarity. Okay, good.